Okay, hello. So, in this video we're going to have a look at silhouettes. Now, this isn't the ideal way to do silhouettes, and I'll show you why in the demo section. And I'm also not going to be going through in an insane level of detail, because there is a lot to go through, but I'm going to sort of cover the, the main important gems now, the main important concepts. So, let's say we have a triangle, and we want to determine whether an edge of this triangle is a silhouette. One way we can do it is we can say, okay, well, if this triangle is facing towards us and it is attached to another triangle, which is facing away from us, then this edge, the boundary between the two triangles, must be a silhouette. Um, and then in that case, what we want to do is we want to generate, run this in the geometry shader and generate some extra geometry to sort of mark that out with a line and say that's a silhouette. So it's sort of going to break this down. The first thing is how do we tell if a triangle is facing the player? Well, let's do this in screen space. So we have x, y, and then the z-axis, if we follow the right-hand rule, positive z would be facing towards us. And so what we need to do is we need to get the z component of the normal and determine if it's positive, and then it's facing towards us. So then how do we get the normal of a general triangle? Well, let's give this three points, um, a, b, and c. And just put the normal here. For a triangle, every point will have the same normal. If we go sweep around this way by the right-hand rule, then if I take the direction vector from A to C, cross with the direction vector from A to B, then that will give me the normal. Okay, fair enough. We know how to get a cross product in 3D, in 3D across product is um, the, uh, cross product is essentially a three by three determinant. Um, and the first, oh sorry, the first row is the i, j, k. The second row is the direction vector a to c. That is uh, the c component minus the a component. and then similarly for AB. A little bit messy there. Okay, now we do not need the full normal vector. We just need the K component. So to get the K component, because we're taking a determinant, we cross out the relevant row and column, and then this little sub matrix here, the determinant of that is the component that we're after. So in other words, the Z component of the normal will be the determinant of this. Which then expands, remember, a determinant of a two by two is the on diagonal product minus the off diagonal product. And then we can just go ahead and expand that. And yeah, that's really messy, but the point is these bits cancel out. And then we have this nice sort of expression. We see CX times BY minus CY times BX. It's all very symmetric. Um, CY times AX minus CX times AY and so on. Anyway, 
So this expression, something mathematical, comes down to the z component of the normal, and if this is positive, it is facing towards the player, and if it's negative, it's facing away from the player. So again, if we have two triangles which are next to each other, one's towards the player, one's away from the player, then that boundary is a silhouette, and we should draw a, um, a quad along it. Now, the next question is, how do we determine which triangles are attached to each other? And that comes down to the drawing mode. So typically, we draw a number of different ways. We draw triangle strips, triangle fans, triangle lists, whatever you want. Um, in general, a triangle is three points, A, B, C, okay? But if I just pass that in as a triangle, the shader really won't know what it's attached to. So I'm, we actually draw in triangle adjacency mode. And what that means is beyond just the th three points for the triangle, we also put in the sort of triangle neighborhood of this triangle. So we say between A and B, which um, point is connected there? And between B and C, which point is connected there? So for lack of a better term, I would call this point AB because it's between A and B. I would call this point BC and I would call this point CA. Now the order that this data is passed in would be like this is point zero and then one, two, three, four, five. So if we're rendering this practically, only points zero, two and four are relevant for actually drawing the triangle, points one, three, and five are like extra metadata, which could be helpful, for instance, in determining whether two triangles sit next to each other on an edge, on a silhouette. Anyway, so that's kind of enough for now. I'll step into the code. So there's kind of a lot here, I guess. Yeah, in the description, I have this in various sort of stages of completion, so you can go in and, and have a look at it. The sort of two really important things I'd like to draw our attention to. Um, the first one is in the model construction. So here I've switched to index-based drawing, element-based drawing, and it, it doesn't speed things up because once that data gets into the shader, uh, the first step of the shader is input assembly, which um, reconstructs the, the full data as if we were just using arrays and not indices, but it does reduce the storage in memory. Um, and what index drawing is basically saying is we have these vertices, and these are all the attributes at each of the points, and we have these indices and that's saying um, referencing points based on integers. So it's saying, you know, point number zero, point number one, point number two, and that is read from the, the vertices, the VBO. But anyway, I'm doing, I'm doing a great job of, of explaining that. But um, what we basically do is we load the file and then unpack its data and then we sort of search through it and use the indices to make triangles and then use the, um, the data to um, determine which points are connected to each other and then to, to form the structure of um, joined triangles. Let me sort of step a little bit more into that. So. Okay, so unpack data, all we're really doing is looking through all the vertices and appending them to our big list. So we're sort of flattening out that data structure. And then with the adjacency, what we're doing is we construct a set of triangles. The number of triangles is the number of points divided by three, makes sense. So here we have a whole sort of set of triangles which has been made. And then we search through that set of triangles and we say for each triangle, look through all the 
other triangles and see how these connect. And if we look in here, it's really just a whole bunch of if statements and conditionals. It's not that exciting. And furthermore, looking through, you could probably guess that this takes a lot of time. And yes, there are more, probably, definitely more elegant ways of doing it. I haven't done that at this point. So what I did instead is I set it up so that the first time we load a model it takes a bit of time because it does a slightly inefficient algorithm, but then <clears throat> it writes all the the flattened data, so the vertices and the indices, writes them out to a file. So then in future, we can just read that in. We don't have to parse it again. It's already there. It's kind of like caching. So for instance, if I load this up, here we have the original girl model with all the data of like, oh, these are the vertices. These are the normals, the textures, the faces, and all of that. <clears throat> and then we have this flattened version, which is essentially just reading out the C++ array, the C++ vector as a big flattened data structure. This, so this is much faster to read. There's no processing. The processing has already been done. <coughs> oh, sorry. Of course, it's not a perfect system. Sometimes we get these sort of signs and what this indicates is that the algorithm has not been able to join triangles together so for an index value it gives about 3.4 billion or so not great but it's an improvement on what it was doing before before it wasn't joining any triangles together so anyway that's the first part is building the structure of adjacent triangles and we just need to make sure in the engine when we render we are where are we we're rendering in triangles adjacency mode okay but otherwise that part's fine i can yeah you can have a look through that in your own time um let's have a look at the shader setup so we look at the vertex for the tune it is pretty much the same. Nothing has changed. Oh, well, no. The only thing that's changed is I changed the names here to geo position to indicate that they're going into the geometry shader. And that's just to avoid variable name clashes. There's nothing really serious to worry about there. Okay. So then on the geometry shader, things get significantly different. Okay. So I'll step through this. We specify that we are assembling shapes in triangle adjacency mode. So that means that the shader is expecting six input vertices for every triangle, right? Because you've got the three ABC plus the neighboring points. Now we are going to take in geo position and the like, but of course those are arrays because we're going to take in six of them and that is handled by the shader for us. We are going to output things in triangle strip mode with a max vertex count of 15. The reason for that is that if an edge is a silhouette, it will have a quad generated on it, which is four vertices. So if you imagine a triangle has three edges, it could have at most three quads. So that's 12 vertices plus the three vertices for the triangle itself for a total of 15. Then what are we outputting? Well, we're pretty much, the first three are really going to go through with no alteration, position, color, and normal. Nothing's going to happen to them. Then we have this third option, uh, sorry, fourth option is edge. Now it would make sense to call this a Boolean. For some reason, my video card just hates Booleans. It just doesn't work with them. It works fine with floats. What this flat does is this flat is telling the rasterizer not to interpolate this attribute for the reason that an edge, a shape, is either part of a silhouette or it isn't. There's no in-between. We don't want that to be interpolated. We have some parameters here for the general construction. The width sort of is what you'd imagine. It's the width of the 
rectangle, and then the extension is how far to the left and right of the silhouette points do we want to extend. Anyway, we have this is front facing test, which is essentially the cross product operation that I went through before on the paper. And then we have this function here to emit an edge quad. So what this is saying is our, func our code has already determined that between these two points in 3D space, that edge between them on that line segment is a silhouette. So we want to generate a quad along those lines. So um, we have this extension parameter, which is essentially just sort of a proportion of the displacement between the two. And then we have this direction vector, which is simply the point at B minus the point at A. Note that we're doing this in two dimensional coordinates, X and Y, because we're doing this in screen space. So Z shouldn't really mean anything in screen space. And then um, we construct a vector which is perpendicular to this direction vector. And that means that when we take the dot product that has to come out to zero, so for that reason, we reverse the X and Y components and add a negative to one of them. Well, I could, it doesn't matter at all. I could put the negative here. It might render a little bit differently, but that would still be a normal vector. Okay, so then we go ahead, we set the edge and we generate the four points, which will be used for the quad. And because we're in triangle strip mode, It'll take the first three points, make the first triangle. Then it will take the next three points, make the second triangle. So yeah, if we imagine this direction vector for simplicity running from left to right, then this would be the leftmost position and then a little bit further to the left. And then we would have the leftmost position a little bit further to the left and then down a little bit, I guess you could say or up, doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter whether this normal is sort of above or below because we just need to be some variation off of the edge. And then this would be the rightmost position plus a little bit to the right, and then rightmost position, a little bit to the right, down a bit or up a bit, doesn't matter. Okay. And also we do not, at this stage, we're emitting some points. We do not have to set the fragment position, color anomal, because if this edge attribute is set, then those will be ignored because there'll be no lighting. Okay, so onto the sort of the body of it. So what we do is we take the six points, A, B, C, and the neighboring points by accessing the GL in struct, getting its position, and dividing by W because it hasn't been um, hasn't been perspective divided yet, and we do need to display these on the screen, so they do need to be perspective divided. But anyway, where was I? Okay, so then we test. Okay, so if our um, ABC remember is our actual triangle, if our triangle is front facing, but then one of the neighboring triangles which we can construct by taking two points and the point between them is not front facing, then put a quad on that edge and then just keep, keep checking, keep testing. Now, after the neighbors of the triangle have been checked, any silhouettes have been added as necessary. We then output the original triangle. So we say, okay, well, this triangle is not an edge and we pass through the data. Again, we're not doing anything to it, we're just passing it along. And yeah, just run it. And note that we do not have to perspective divide. At this point, we're setting GL position because the rasterizer will automatically perform that perspective division. Okay, so yeah, I mean, pretty much in so many words, there it is. In the fragment shader, we take in this data and it's pretty much the same. The only difference is um, 
if we are on an edge, then instead of doing the lighting calculation, we simply output our silhouette color, which I've set here to yellow. And um, yeah, there it is. So like I said, it's a link in the description for the source code. But again, we can load this up and it loads pretty quickly. The first time it takes about three minutes to parse that model, but um, second time we're just reading a file, so that's fine. So there we see it. We have the silhouettes seem to work reasonably well. Like I said, when I was looking at that file, it's not perfect, but it's okay. Now, this is why I was saying it's not the ideal way to do this sort of thing. It's because there's these weird sort of effects when we get too close. And also, if I look on the other side, then suddenly these lines seem to appear. Which I'm not, I'm not entirely sure what's causing that. It might be the errors in the triangle adjacency setup, but um, yeah. Anyway, I know it's been a little bit vague today, but hopefully this is helping you to get a little more confident with using geometry shaders to do some creative stuff. Anyway, hope you had fun and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.